take a quick demo here. I'll, I'll, I'll walk through a very, very short app. Uh, the, the idea is not to uh, kind of overwhelm it, but uh, show it. So this is my app, right? Uh, what this is doing is this has two pieces of technology. Uh, there's no, uh, while, my, while on my machine, all of these exist, but I'll show you how it's independent of my machine. So yeah, I'm importing OS, I'm importing Socket, I'm importing Flask. And I'm importing Redis, which is kind of uh, used to manage a counter here, which for some reason doesn't seem to be working. And uh, all I'm doing is just connecting to Redis. Probably this is where the issue is in my error. But this is a simple app route where uh, on the browser you'll be able to see that uh, hello will be printed, right? And then the counter. This is what is the interesting piece, right? This is where we have uh, the Docker file which I was specifying that we build from top down. So you say from Python and what it will do is it will connect to Docker Hub and pull Python. Then it will, you set the working directory and tell Docker or which is let's say the container, the container image that my working directory is app. And then you copy everything into app. So all my app, my PY requirements will be pushed inside it. And then what I need to run is, I'll show you my requirements file. I have just two things, Flask and Redis. But this could be anything. I could install, put anything here, right? The, the idea is just, I can write 20, 300 different things and all of them will be installed. The important messages, they will be installed inside the container. They will be uh, running and installed inside the container. So you typically do a from, set the work directory, copy all your code, and then you do a run pip install where all of your, uh, let's say, libraries are installed. And then you even expose a port right outside of which uh, which needs to be accessed outside of this container because uh, the container is in itself uh, and has an operating system it needs to know what ports will be used i need to do outside and inside that's the networking and then you can have uh, your environment variables uh, set or not set and then finally you specify run this when the container launches so you do a cmd and you call python app.py very similar to what i will do in this in if i were to let's say connect to it uh, using a command line right so this is my app.py this is what docker file is the docker file is helping it run it uh, kind of uh, execute all of the things and install things the requirement is to manage all my uh, different libraries that i need to install i'll show you uh, what i did is just before this i started this uh, and uh, you'll be able to see all of the stuff that happens so the ones this is where I have built uh, my container as I showed it's a pretty simple way so I told docker build and you need to be inside the working directory to be able to run this command hyphen hyphen tag friendly hello which is just a name for my container image and you put a dot again this is very similar to git right you have to put a git add dot and it will pick all of the things in that folder right the first step was from python right what it did is it downloaded the latest image of python here right there's a python image which has been downloaded to my machine it changed the working directory and then there was an intermediate container it removed it and this this keeps on happening multiple times the removal of intermediate container etc etc then the step three and four were kind of step three was to copy it and step four was to run the pip command and this is exactly a pip command as you would run on your machine or using a conda environment so what you have is you have collected flask you have collected redis you have collected all the dependencies around it right and this could be anything this could be uh, any application right then you are exposing the image and then you are removing the interface you are kind of uh, let's say again uh, removing the intermediate container and you are exposing the port 80 uh, the environment variable is kind of uh, i don't think i've used it anywhere but it's just to show that you can do it and finally you will get a successfully tagged message and a warning where because i'm using a windows host and uh, the the base python image is using uh, i believe uh, linux and that's why this uh, this error is there but this hasn't caused me any issues now i just did a docker image ls where you see that this was created some time back and uh, it's not really nine seconds it's probably one hour right now and then uh, yeah the couple of errors here and i corrected the port mapping and you need to specify what port you need to run so the outside port goes on the right which is when i specified in my app.py port 80 
and the port on which my machine this is running it's 4001 and uh, as you can see on localhost 4001 i'm just calling this now this counter seems to be uh, not working but this is getting refreshed because this is connected to live server you see you're getting a message every time uh, i do this it's it's kind of a life so that's how you typically have a machine learning uh, example very similarly you have a, a api which is wrapped around it you package it and then you kind of deploy it right uh, that's that's effectively the message and uh, that's pretty much the core uh, idea of this talk right now coming back to mr uh, satyath questions that uh, what more complexities come into picture for online learning of models right that's uh, what i want to jump on to now because that's and and feel free to uh, put up more questions i'm almost uh, nearing the end of my talk probably 10 minutes more feel free to shoot up your questions or just unmute yourself if you want to jump in now we need a, what containers did is they helped us kind of isolate it right if if i if i purely talk from a model learning perspective then this is a better deck to probably flash when i need to do my experiment management i need to take care of model serving i need to take care of server in uh, let's say integrations i need to take care of data and model versioning and pipelines and workflow uh, also there are certain things when we go scale let's say uh, in an e-commerce website what's happening is data is coming in very very fast so your ingestion layer needs to be capturing that data in some form of uh, probably on an s3 bucket or, or, or whatever is your uh, storage layer right and from there we need to pick up the latest files and push it into the retraining scenarios also pushing in the retraining uh, needs to be having a schedule where you could uh, benefit certain things on in kubernetes something like let's say multi node pool where you have a node pool which is effectively serving people uh, for apis and stuff like that and uh, there's a much larger node pool let's say a gpu node pool which is helping you retrain it so those kind of scenarios also happen now some of them are listed here which is uh, we the what containers have simply helped us achieve or do is this is probably uh, uh, running a single instance of it but what if, if i need to run multiple instances of it right the answer would be run more containers but how to do that so docker swarm and kubernetes are the uh, and, and mostly it's kubernetes honestly speaking uh, docker swarm is kind of uh, a left away guy most of the times it's good for proof of concepts and uh, low uh, application needs but uh, not really a true production system right so what we need is a little more than isolation we need to talk about my scheduling where my schedules are and where my containers run what would be the schedule for my api server because it's going to be live what would be the schedule for my retraining scenarios because they need to happen probably every six hours or every three days or every month depending on the uh, on the scheme so how do we manage the container uh, let's say scheduling that's that's another challenge the life cycle and health since we are talking real-time systems no system is going to run happily there will be failures and there will be let's say down times around it now uh, one question would be how do we respond to those failures but the primary is how do we know that a failure is about to happen or a failure has happened so that's where you have life cycle and health checks uh, kubernetes kind of excels at you know, auto scaling and those kind of things are also kind of very very great at uh, we'll touch upon that but on life cycle and health kubernetes gives you a console very easy console uh, to see and uh, check out things on, on on docker swarm you have something which is called a swarm pit it's a very intuitive ui which will show all of your nodes all of your running containers and things like that so that's uh, some of the technologies you could leverage uh, upgrade and rollback uh, where are your containers now let's say you want to push an upgrade right you'll typically also need have a container registry because uh, that's where you'll version your code right you have versioned your code you need to version your data you need to version your model and very similarly you need to take care of versioning your container because that's container either has the retraining logic or the updated retraining logic or the way model is inferenced right you need to think through that that's your uh, system design effectively your architecture <coughs> isolation very important how do I make sure that uh, my jobs are not interfacing too much and uh, they, are, they, they get the compute that they need? Again, the retraining versus serving kind of 
comes into picture in this and uh, the, the the workshop probably that we talked about at the beginning uh, will will probably elaborate a little more on that uh, scaling uh, which is again making jobs and clusters bigger or smaller the retraining scenarios could be something uh, on the lines of let's say we 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 need to retrain every six hours or or probably every six months doesn't matter and we need a very very large uh, cluster right we have let's say uh, a d tier machine or an a tier machine or a lower or a micro or mini or a medium machine on aws while on uh, training we need a g tier series which which has a gpu and uh, needs some nvidia proprietary stuff so all of that uh, cluster management needs to be thought of and designed uh, again very easy to do in kubernetes uh, kubeflow is kind of great at achieving some of the things we are not touching Q on kubeflow today but uh, we'll will will certainly do that in the workshop because that's very very important uh, security continuously scan container images uh, kind of for security vulnerabilities an important aspect because vms are thought to be traditionally much more secure and in the past few years or at least last 8 months to 12 months a lot of things around let's say container security has been come out and vulnerability assessments have started to sprout up right so so that's that's very very uh, important to see load balancing again one of the core things that needs to be taken care of when you are running a multi clustered environment uh, provisioning storage what data to store what data could be ephemeral which is what data is uh, transient what data is persistent storage and finally logging and monitoring log everything that's happening right log your model accuracy log your data for example uh, you have your model suddenly is performing over 95 percent and uh, there were spikes of going below to 90 or 85 percent right you would typically in you would typically want to call out those scenarios very clearly and if your system has not does not know what data caused it what was the anomaly probably it could be an outlier that flew in the data and you will not know after uh, that has happened all you will have is there was a dip in accuracy and that could offset your client right so logging is also very important very nice certain very nice frameworks exists uh, you could have uh, fluentd or you could just even rely on python code logger which is also very efficient also one of the core things which we'll want to talk, talk in the workshop that we have i'll quickly show the website for kubeflow uh, I did not intend it to as a part of my deck, but uh, it kind of warrants itself. Now, this is a Google uh, uh, project which kind of uh, builds on top of Kubernetes and is very, very popular nowadays. There are books and courses coming out and uh, anywhere you are running Kubernetes, you should be able to run Kubeflow. What it does is it helps you manage everything, uh, at least in the machine learning landscape. You have your notebook manager, you have your model training manager. You have serving manager and it supports multiple different kind of uh, serving frameworks tensorflow serving seldon serving etc etc you have pipelines where you could just use pipelines which where you can schedule and compare runs you could uh, just uh, just do it in a workflow kind of environment and see what it runs are it's multi framework it supports all sorts of uh, libraries and frameworks that exists right now so very good technology to look at uh, coming back to my deck so that's a little bit about uh, containers and uh, we need a little more than isolation and uh, at the end probably i'll just want to say that this is just the beginning of it this is probably where uh, we need to think about how do we manage our experiments because the world the core world that we want to play in uh, is very very important experiments management notebooks uh, where you have let's say your jupyter notebooks how are you saving it how, how is code extracted from it Model serving, we discussed one approach which is container based, it could be multiple, we could have a batch based serving, we could have a serverless serving etc. Pipelines and workflows, we have not touched on these but uh, these are very very important to touch upon. Serverless integrations, uh, which is data, how do we make sure that our models are only called upon when we need to, right? It could be not a live model that is running all the time, it could be probably once in a while that we need to do. And data and model versioning very very important so these are some of the things which is over and above so that's that's what uh, is probably a sneak peek into this it's not a lot and quite a lot of content uh, 